you know, it's hard to hit velocity when you haven't seen anything in five days. I don't like the system, quite honestly. We're going to have to deal with it. We better figure it out because we're going to try like hell this year to win the division and have five days off again. Brian Snicker, manager of the Atlanta Braves, joining us right now, sitting next to Adam Jones. Snick, can you hear us? And how you doing, man? How's camp? I can hear you. I'm doing great. And camp's been phenomenal so far. Check out Come this on, group. that's what you have to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Give me your biggest Snip gripe right okay. now, Snit. What, 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 what's bothering you and what's, your, what's, what's something that stands out this year versus other years where you're like, damn, I love that we have this and damn, I wish we had this. Um, yeah, I, I don't, you know, I, I wish I was allowed to just play who I want when I want, especially on the road. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, um, I don't know. I, I love it. You know, I love everything about spring training. God, I've been doing this for so long and this is such a great facility that we have here. And, um, it's been good. I mean, it's, it's, a, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, we been fortunate with how great a health everybody came into camp with. And, and, um, it's just a matter of getting some at bats and innings and, and getting this thing rolling. I want to ask you, a personal friend of mine, Matt Tuyasasopo, we came up together with the Mariners. Now he's your third base coach. I know he's taken over for Juan Washington. Uh, a tough, tough, tough task to ask. How has he been? I know he doesn't get the accolades and the, and the glory, but how has Tui been acclimated himself to he's going to handle the third base coach? Job. Yeah, he's. You know what? We brought Tui up last year for a weekend series in the middle of the summer, and, and that's not an easy job. I coached third base a long time. And, um, you know, it's not easy to jump into a big weekend series, and he did great. And um, he's done a great job in our minor leagues, and, and I've managed to in the minor leagues here in the big leagues. Um, and he's going to do a great job and has done a great job. And he's a great worker, very knowledgeable baseball guy. And, and um, so I'm really excited for him to have this opportunity. Awesome. Hey, Snet, Todd Frazier here, man. How's everything going? <laughs> Good, Todd. How are you? Good, good. Always good to see you. Um, my yeah, question to you, you is pretty simple. You know, you got some new guys coming in, Chris Sale, Ronaldo Lopez. It seems like everybody just jumps in line and, and just turns out to be pretty much the Braves way, as I like to call it, man. Is there a message that you send to these guys uh, once they come into spring training, like, hey, be yourself? Or it's like, it just seems like every time you get somebody new, they kind of take off and flourish and turn out to be the Braves player that you want to be and the team becomes so such a better team for it. Is there a message that you give or it's just something that naturally happens? Well, I think it, it's happening here, I think, because of all those guys in that clubhouse. I mean, it's um, it's a, uh, a great vibe here. It's a great uh, – it's it's a lot of guys that love to play baseball. They're driven to, to succeed. They're really good baseball players. They're young major leaguers still – um, that have accomplished a lot in their young careers, really. And, and um, so I, I think it just, it, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a place where people can do well. I mean, it's just, I, I said the same thing about Jared Clinic when he came in here. And, and um, it, it's just a really good atmosphere to guys to come in. They're welcomed in. I think they appreciate how these guys play. They've seen them from afar. I think, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a place where it's, it's fun to be. You know what? And guys enjoy guys enjoy uh, playing baseball and, and we've been very successful. So I think it leads to people doing well. Is there any internal, I mean, there's probably internal discussions, but can you tell us any of the internal discussions that you guys have had about how to succeed in the playoffs? We had some Dodgers yeah. on Max, Max Muncy talked about, you know what, maybe our approach as a, as a lineup, is really good for the season, but maybe we need to do something a little bit different for the postseason. Have you guys discussed, or what have you guys discussed? Because I'm sure you guys. No, have we. You know, yeah, I, I completely redid what we did this year compared to two years ago. Um, we play. We had normal work days, and and we played game. We played three games. We brought. We let the fans in for free. Um, we, you know, we just, we showed up at the same time. We did batting practice. We did our extra work and we played a game. And, um, you know, I, I, will be honest with you. The, the biggest thing we haven't done is hit. And I, I don't just don't think in baseball, you know, I always worry about four days off at the all-star break, but everybody's going through that. Not just a couple of teams. Um, you know, it's hard to hit velocity when you haven't seen anything in five days. 
you know, so um, I, I, that's that's my biggest thing. We we had a team that set all these records and everything offensively, and and we didn't hit much in the postseason. I don't know that it's approach. I don't, you know, I think it's just a matter of I don't like the system. Quite honestly, we're going to have to deal with it. We better figure it out because we're going to try like hell this year to win the division and have five days <laughs> off again. I mean, we can change all the focus and all that we want. I think, you know, as an offensive player, when you're not seeing, you know, the lights aren't on, the the juices aren't flowing, and you're not seeing velocity like you're going to face in the playoffs, it's, you know what, it's hard to score. That being said, we added some velocity to our bullpen, and hopefully we can keep the other guys from scoring until we get our sea legs under us, and you know what, and our offense can get kicking. All right, I'll give you an option. I just I have Rob Manfred on the phone right now, and he said – Snit, he goes, uh, you guys get the choice. You win the division. Do you want the days off or do you want to go right away and play to 23? You play the Marlins. You play the wild card. Do you, do you, would you want that option? Um, yeah, I, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I, I'd like to play. I'd like to take, you know, somebody, it's funny because somebody asked Chipper last year, say, what you guys used to do when they did that? And I said, well, they, he said, we never did it. You know, I mean, it was always the system. I, I don't know that, that I, I want an option. I, I just want the thing to be where, you know, it's more conducive to maybe taking a day or two off and playing and not having all that time off with the same ramifications for, you know, the outcome. No, so, I, I agree. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Adam. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, you know, stay on that because mine is, is about this uh, Cunha guy. No, and, and I'll, I'll finish. And I, I was a big <laughs> proponent of the same thing, Snit. I was – I complained. I'm like, bro, there's too many – days. Kratzy and I had this argument. I said, there's too many damn days off, bro. If I don't see live pitching in a game situation, you can do as much live as you want off the field. It's not the same as preparing for playing against, you know, Yamamoto or whoever it is that you're going to face in the playoffs. It's not the same thing. Guys are goofing around. Oh, yeah, I'll step in. Let's go. It's not the same, and I think you're right. They have to figure something out where it's a day or two, not five days, and I'll leave it at that, and we can move on. <laughs> All right, I wanted to ask about Acuna, a guy who had 40 and 70 last year. I mean, that's unheard of. Barry Bond said, tipped his cap. Yeah. Um, how do you rein him in, bring him, bring him – he's, I mean, he's on top. How do you bring him and keep him normal, and what, ex, what season are you expecting from him? A 40-70 is hard to – duplicate but 40 40 i mean no oh, i i you know what it, it's this kid love he has so much fun playing he wants to play i had to talk him out of and convince him that it really wasn't going to do him any good to play 162 last year because that's what he wanted to do and there was a couple of double headers you know and he was set on it because he missed so much time the year before um, that that he wanted to um, he wanted to play 162 and and the kid loves to play baseball um, but it, it's kind of helping him understand that you know it's it's just about having him out there and productive and he doesn't need to play 162 so um, you know right now I mean he's he's just maturing as a young man as a father as a husband the whole thing and and um, he's having a time of his life right now which I said why wouldn't you I'd love to be in that body and play baseball I mean um, but uh, you know it's it's just it's fun to watch because the kid I said too you know he might be the only guy that's capable of breaking his own records <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what he did I want to talk about pitching a little bit uh, Bryce Elder, Ronaldo Lopez, I think they're battling right now for that fifth spot, if, if I'm not mistaken. I know everybody's battling for a spot, but those two especially. Um, how do you see that turning out? And uh, can you talk a little bit about both of them and uh, what they bring to the table for your squad? I love, love both of them. I love getting um, Lopez in that trade because I saw him from afar. We played against the White Sox last year, and, and I thought that was a great get for us. Um, we're still early. You know what? This thing will just – you know what? We'll play this thing out till – the end of the month and, and see where we're at, what makes our club better. Um, you know, we got Bryce was 12 and four, I think last year, made the all-star team. Um, Lopez has started before. And, and so we just, you know what, it's an option. You always get six or seven guys stretched out in spring training. And he's just another one that, that we're going, we're going to get stretched out. So we'll just evaluate at the end of spring, see where we're at and, and what makes our club the best. Hey, Snake, give me the lineup breakdown right now. 
where are we at and what are you thinking? Any decisions that you think need to be made? No, about, I got you know, probably used the same stamp I had last year, except, okay. um, you know, <laughs> put Kelnick in there. <laughs> How where? Will Kelnick be in there? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kratz. No, no, like, like, where, where's Kelnick going to fit in there? Where or how often? He's, is gonna, he he's gonna probably going to fit in at nine. You know what? That's I'm not nice going to. You hitter. know, I know as a young player, it's it's kind of like it's not too bad hitting nine, and you got Ronald Acuna sitting there behind you too. So they're going to be oh. thinking twice about bringing a lefty in on him with Ronald in the, you know, laying in the weeds. So uh, Michael Harris hit ninth last year and had a pretty good year. Yes, I he did. For y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Harris then? Where would he go? Um, he'll, you know, he'll go up in the meat of the order. I probably look at him as like six, seven, something like that, depending on who's catching and and um, you know. But our our we're pretty set, probably one through five, six. So Michael may slide in at seven and then bump RC up just to break up the left-handers. How many? I love, we're gonna have Michael love, Harris on here on on here later. How many? How many times do you have to go to Michael Harris when he's hitting? you know, all-star numbers when he's doing what he did last year and you're like, hey, big fella, you're hitting ninth again. Like how many times <laughs> you have to talk to him and like could not console him, but we're all egotistical. I didn't want to hit ninth and I sucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't because you hit eighth most of the time because there's always a pitcher behind you. <laughs> I did I did hit eighth, thank you. The worst hitter hits eighth. The worst hitter on the team hits eighth. That is fact. Look it up. You know what? Once that thing rolls around and you know what, as long as you're in the way I look at it, you're in the lineup. And um, you know what? That That's what made kind of lengthened our lineup was having a guy like Michael hitting and hitting ninth. And I, you know what? I get a little worried that he was doing so good right there. I didn't want to screw all that up either and, and change that mix. So, um, you know, Michael's versatile. He could hit pretty, he could probably hit anywhere in a lineup. I mean, this kid, and he will, he's going to work his way up to hitting in the meat of the order at some point in time um, in his career. And, and um, you know, it's just, but he's still a young player. And, and um, you know what, it's just whatever's going to make our club better, where you can hit to, to extend our lineup is what I'm looking at. I absolutely love your honesty. And I love how you even understand like, Hey, Kelnick's going to be in a nine hole. And I think that's phenomenal. But we've been talking about communication as a manager earlier in the show. And I want to ask you a question about communication, whether you're young or old, are you a manager that's going to communicate with your guys? Say, Hey man, I always, I know I, I always bring up Dusty Baker because he was really good at it. He said, Hey, Frazier, listen, you're probably playing Tuesday, maybe Friday and Sunday, you know, it could change, but at the same time, be ready. Even as a young player, first two years, are you big on communication? Is that something you strive on, especially with your ball club? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's like I tell the guys, my door's always open, and if you come in, I'm going to tell you the truth. I said, I wasn't told the truth my whole career, and I said, I'm going to tell you guys the truth. You're grown men. You can handle it. And another thing is I don't want them to come to the ballpark and be surprised by the lineup. They know that they're going to play where they're hitting the whole thing every day before they come, and I'll either tell them the night, after the game or if something happens and I roll over in bed and the lineup comes to me, I'll text them in the morning with what I'm fixing to do. Hey, Snit, last one. Um, I know you probably saw some moves from the Dodgers as well this offseason, and a lot of people are like, oh, they're the Thanks. team to beat now, even though you guys have dominated for years. So what, what's your message to fans about the Braves still, and what did you think about the Dodgers? You know what? We got to play the game. That's why we're getting ready to go to play this marathon here in another month. We're going to play seven months of baseball. I don't even look at that anymore. It doesn't bother me. Um, you know what? We've been on the outside looking in a lot of years and things like that, but we still got to play the games and a lot can happen over the course of that seven month season. So it doesn't bother me one bit. Snip, before you let you go, I just want to know, how do the coaches get through 162? Players, we know how we do it. It's a lot of Ben Gay cold tubs. How the coaches get through? Tito. <laughs> there we go. Tito. Your keto longevity. You look great today. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Enjoy the all rest right. of the camp and see this season, all right? All right. Good to see you guys. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.